it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time watching me, welcome. This is my most recent February pre-order from Teddy Bees. Teddy Bees, the one that we all look forward to this time of year, I mean, meaning when a pre-order shipped. Um, I am so excited to uh, check out my order. I, I do not remember what I ordered anymore. I just know that I ordered more tubs than I ever have. Um, and I also just... Um, I love, love seeing all the pictures on Facebook and your videos and all those things. Um, my order arrived yesterday, and as promised, I um, am filming this tonight. So my husband's at Golf League, so there won't be any interruptions or anything like that. Um, Teddy Bees is owned by Tiffany Smith from Houston, Texas. This was a huge pre-order, a huge pre-order. I know a lot of us made either smaller than usual orders or super large orders. Um, that seems to be the consensus that I've gathered. Um, on the top of each box, I have not smelled anything. You know, I do this on camera for you guys with most of my hauls from any vendor. I... 95% of the time open it up live and smell it for the first time. So these are my true authentic reactions and you know that's that is what it is. I did order some bags this time. We don't have to talk about those because they're bags. The reason being is the last couple of times on tops of the tubs I've had some lids crack. So that's why I bought some um bags and I also got some extra lids too which are right here that I'm digging for. These extra lids. Uh, being that I purchased a lot of tubs, um, I grabbed some of these here. I like that she offers as as an option because, you know, even though Tiffany just does an immaculate job with packing, you know, herself or her team, whoever whoever's working down there at Teddy Bee's, um, stuff happens. And that's okay. It is what it is. So um, each order comes with the thank you card um, as on my thumbnail. Um, I usually do the thank you card as my thumbnail because my box is too heavy to hoist up in the air here. I don't need to break my shoulder. Um, this just has uh, Teddy B's website, uh, her Facebook group, her email, tiff at teddybeeswaxco.com. Uh, join the Facebook group, QR code, all of those good things on here. If you're a customer of Teddy Bees, you know all this stuff. And then on the back are some uh, tips and tricks for getting the best performance out of Tiffany's Wax. Uh, that comes in every order, as I said. And then um, the whole order is enveloped in... Um, bubble wrap and then everything is packed snugly in here with this stuff that my cat loves this is the little craft paper the shards whatever you want to call these things <laughs> um in the order here too so i always have fun after i unpack an order that has these in it um i've got to really make sure i clean up because my cat will get into them and then they're all over the place so okay I do not know, remember what I ordered, but I made three separate orders. Um, the second was a medium sized, well, you know, I guess it's what's large to you might not be large to me and all that stuff. So to me, my first order was the largest. My second was a medium size and my last was just a couple of items and the bags and stuff because I thought I'm like, crap, I forgot to put in my bags and lids. So, of course, I grabbed a couple more souffles um, and the bags for that last order. So, in no particular order, here we go. We're going to start with, we're just going to start. <laughs> this is one that was a couple of pre-orders ago, or maybe even the last pre-order to this, the, the last one of 2023. This is one that I loved this is one that was my favorite scent from that pre-order, the, the last pre-order of 2023, and one I even grabbed a loaf in at the RTS for that one. This is Sugar Chestnuts and Apple Butter. I love this blend. When I smelled this blend, it was on camera, and I think I, I, think I said, you know, I didn't have the reaction I had back when I opened up uh, Midnight Rosewood for the first time in Plum and Peppercorns. That was maybe a year ago, sometime last year. Those are some of my favorite scents. And I am a heavy bakery melter, but I also like the earthy and the, and the sophisticated, the sensual, the sexy, all of those blends. 
and Tiffany does an immaculate job, in my opinion, of creating these complex blends. A lot of her Game of Thrones line has Palo Santo, and then she runs with it from there. She's also she also has a sensual line, anything with the cashmere, any any of those cozy blends. Tiffany is fantastic at blending perfumey and cologne scents, even laundry. And then there's unique ones like Jon Snow that I am, I am babying the amount I have left because it, you know, took a full year to come back. Jon Snow um, is uh, sh flannel sheets, uh, Palo Santo mint, and there's one more thing in there. But this sugar chestnuts and apple butter, this one um, grabbed a lot of you. I see after this one was released last year, a lot of people got on this wagon and this one is is just the perfect apple scent in my opinion. This is apple butter, brown sugar, toasted chestnuts, clove, and notes of spice. This was poured on March 8th. So this one's ready to go. But I will put this in my storage and use my older stash of it because I like to let teddy bees get nice and cured. This is, it's, it's a really rich, creamy, heavy apple butter with a little bit of chestnut. The chestnut is, it, 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 it isn't really too nutty and it's not off-putting in any way. You know, chestnuts are notorious around the holiday time. But this nut that she chose to put in here versus a walnut or a pecan or a cashew even, I love that she went off the beaten path and put a chestnut in there. Um, the little bit of spice is just like cinnamon sugar. It's sprinkled on there very delicately. And then the apple butter here is creamy and rich, like I said. It is sweetened with brown sugar and a little bit of cinnamon. And this is, that that's the showstopper, is that apple, that creamy, rich apple. I love this. Even though I have a loaf and another tub, I grabbed another tub because this is going to be on heavy rotation when fall rolls around in a few months. I say that because time is flying. But uh, next one here. Oh, this is one I have, I have anticipated this one so much. Uh, when I saw this blend on Tiffany's menu for this pre-order, I knew I was immediately getting a tub. I didn't even entertain a souffle. And I thought, you know, maybe a loaf. But if you know me, if you watched my Teddy Bee series, I don't buy a loaf of something unless it's something I know I absolutely love and have had before. And unless I just know that I'm going to go right for it. And with me, my number one blend that I will buy no matter what is Witches Be Crazy. That's my favorite bakery blend of all of the vendors that I that I support my favorite bakery brand blend it is perfect to me and that being said I have bought multiple loaves of witches be crazy and subsequent blends of witches be crazy but that's what I do in my home because there are duds out there and I have had a few duds from teddy bees you know some uh, don't really throw as much as you know one of my friends throws in their home kind of a thing and sometimes if you commit yourself to a large size and taking the chance on it what if you don't like it and it doesn't work for you, then you're stuck with it kind of a thing. That's why you don't see me buying a lot of Teddy Bee's loaves unless it's in the RTS or unless it's something that I've had before, like this baby right here, that I feel comfortable buying a larger size in. Um, but I, when I first started shopping with Teddy Bee's two years ago, I was only souffles. I only allowed myself to buy souffles because I could stretch my budget farther and I could get more bang for my buck, um, you know, for lack of a better of a better phrase. Uh, now I have graduated to tubs because I uh, Teddy Bees is right up there in my top five vendors and it seems like they're always they're all tied for number one in my heart because I just can't choose. Um, this next one though let me tell you what I was talking about. This is Cashmere Bubble Bath. And this one really has my heart because of this beautiful bubblegum color. I love this. And I, there's another vendor out there that does a lot of bubble bath blends. And, oh my God. <laughs> this is everything I wanted it to be. Let me tell you the notes. A sensual blend of vanilla rose, cashmere cream, comfort type, which is from Bath and Body Works, and bubbly milk bath. Now, if you know me and if you watch my videos lately, um, especially 
Swanky and L3 Rose. That's what grabbed me with this. I really, I really should have bought a loaf of this because I love rose blends. This is, and I know floral is hard for a great deal of people, a great many people, but then I, you know, I didn't like rose to be anywhere near me other than in the garden until, you know, the last couple of years as I'm getting older. Rose is just, whether it's white rose oil, which I've had and it's delicious, versus fresh cut roses, the, you know, the red or the pink variety. I am really embrace those, that floral in my life. Um, and rose, I think, is the most beautiful flower in the world in terms of the way it smells. I mean, it just, it, 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 there's a few blends that Tiffany has created that touch my soul. And I know that might be a little dramatic to say with, with wax, but like music in my life, if you are Facebook friends with me or you, you know, follow my, my posts and my updates on YouTube, music is such a huge part of my life. And now scent has always been too. But the ones that really touch me are the ones that, that makes me feel it makes me feel like a woman. It makes me feel that, you know, our creator gave us Rose as something to enjoy. I don't know. I'm just trying to justify why this is a floral that is something that I, I don't know. I smell this and it just takes me somewhere, I guess. Like, Calgon take me away of the 90s. This takes me away to my to my safe space and my happy place, which is my kitchen, but I have another happy place too. This, I know that was kind of a little deep, but I'm a deep person. So this is Creamy Rich Rose. If you've ever smelled, I'm going to compare this to another vendor. If you've ever smelled Swanky's Sugared Roses Bubble Bath, this is very similar. That blend from Swanky is a little bit heavier on the rose. This is a little bit more creamy and rich, but this is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous blend. Now, if you don't like roses or floral, don't try this because you'll be disappointed because it is heavy on the rose, but that's what I want. I love that. And Comfort is vanilla and patchouli, I believe. A comfort, I, I don't know. I haven't been in Bath & Body Works for a while, and I, I know that they have changed their aromatherapy line quite a bit. Comfort used to be a member of um, the aromatherapy line. I think they still make it because I have a wallflower in my collection of Comfort. Vanilla and patchouli, it's one of the best ones that they have had, in my opinion. And that cashmere cream, Tiffany threw that in here just to make it a little bit extra sensual, in my opinion. And that vanilla rose and the milk bath, this is a gorgeous... Definitely a bedroom scent, definitely a bathroom scent, especially if you're soaking in a tub or taking a shower or you just, you know, want to relax and meditate or something. Um, this is a gorgeous feminine blend. I really, really, really like this one. So we're at A plus and A plus so far. So <laughs> um, thanks for listening to my 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 deep my deep thoughts there about Rose and some of these connect with me. Um, and, and you should, rem if you watched my, uh, the video when Old School Christmas was uh, in the lineup, it made me cry here on my video because Old School Christmas took me back to the happy times as a kid before, you know, stuff happened in my, in my, in my family life growing up. So um, why Teddy Bees has shot up to the top and the pinnacle of my vendor list. You know, I, I have multiple up there at the top. I don't have to repeat myself with that. But I will always support Tiffany and her wax because she she gives us blends that we can't get anywhere else, really. You know, in this, the level of sophistication, her Game of Thrones line, you know, all of her Palo Santo blends that she gets dark and woodsy with, her sensual line, um, some of her her signature bakery blends like Witches Be Crazy or the I Heart line. Um, that's what just keeps me coming back for more. And I will always be a customer as long as Tiffany is in business and I'm able to uh, to shop with her. Um, this next one is one that is super popular that took off like a rocket a couple of pre-orders ago. This is Whipstaff Manor. 
I've had this one before. I, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't warmed it yet because with my Teddy Bees uh, collection, I work my oldest to my newest. I like to let Tiffany's wax cure a good bit of time for me to get the, 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 the satisfactory throw that I'm looking for. That's just me and what I do in my home. So I'm working on stuff from 2022 and into late 2022 into early 2023. So when you see my empties videos, my chop and chaps, like I, I won't necessarily chop this up relatively soon because I want to get through some of the stuff that I have already collected just so, you know, I just keep it I keep that flow like that. That's what I do with most of my vendors and especially with Teddy Bees. So Whipstaff Manor, Whipstaff Manor, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, I think it's the name of the house in Casper. I think that's what it is. Casper with Christina Ricci from the 90s. Um, I, it's such a cute movie. I think that's what this name is from. I Maybe it's a Game of Thrones. I don't know. But Whipstaff Manor, I, I think, is uh, Casper. But tell me if I'm wrong. I, I, if I'm wrong, it's okay. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. We're always learning every day. I'm, I'm an eternal student. So, Whipstaff Manor, crisp fall air, cedar wood, crunchy leaves, hints of apples and fall spice, toasted marshmallows, and charred pumpkin. This is, in my opinion, the best fall blend. This is great for that segue from late summer in into early fall where it's cold throughout the day not cold as in needing a heavy coat or even the heat on but just a long sleeve shirt when you start going to pumpkin patches and apple and apple orchard apple orchards when the leaves have fallen and there's a chill in the air this is this scent reminds me of that time of year and it's very fitting because this is something I would melt only in the fall. This is spooky and it has a little bit of, it's got woodsiness to it. It has a little bit of the, of burnt, but, but not, I shouldn't say burnt, it's charred, which I'm pretty sure she has in here. Charred pumpkin. This is a blend. It's complicated blend, but if you like fall blends that aren't, of course, bakery, but just outdoorsy, um, um, woodsy fall blends, then this is going to be one you're going to want to try. I got a bigger size of this because I only have a couple souffles and I didn't melt them last season because I, you know, they weren't cured enough for my liking. So Whipstaff Manor, this is a fantastic, very popular blend. Next. Oh, this is one that I went back and forth on. What size do I want to buy this in? This is pistachio bread pudding. Now, if you know me, you know I love pistachio. I have melted pistachio stuff since day one with Fender Wax, and I love pistachio things in my life. The notes of this one are toasted pistachios, glazed donuts, hints of cinnamon, cream-soaked bread, brown sugar, and vanilla icing. If you make a really good bread pudding, you gotta soak it in that cream. You gotta put all that extra yummy stuff in it. I am used to, um, my mom would make bread pudding growing up with raisins and just, uh, cinnamon, you know, like the, the old fashioned, uh, bread pudding. This is the new, the new generation of bread pudding. I would never have thought to put pistachios in bread pudding, but hey, it's always worth a try. I like the Tiffany didn't just keep it straight bread. She threw a little bit of other bakeries in there. Um, she put the the icing, she put the donuts, and this pistachio oil here is, it's not like any of the other pistachio oils that I've smelled from Tiffany's. I, uh, until I smelled this blend here today, I really wasn't a super big fan of Tiffany's pistachio because it's a little bit too nutty for me. It, the couple of blends I'm thinking of are Pistachio Dream, uh, Pistachio Dream Cookies, I think. Uh, that one was a weak performer for me. I could not smell pistachio at all. And the other one is Witches Be Crazy for Pistachio. And the only, I love that blend, but I don't get a pistachio part of it. It's just Witches Be Crazy with extra creamy. This one, though, I do get that beautiful pistachio nut scent in here. But like I said, she she added more to it than just nuts and bread. 
the donuts, a little bit of cream, the sweet icing, the the um, the cinnamon, the donuts. I really like this blend. This was poured back in February, so this is ready to go. It's almost two months old, but I'm going to let this cure nicely because this is going to be this this would be a good fall scent. You know where. I don't necessarily, I melt bakery all year, but sometimes I pair it back in the summertime because I'm melting more fresh blends and laundry and fruity like I think a lot of us do, but I'll melt Christmas in the middle of July if I want to. I just know that that one is going to be one that I'm going to save for fall just because I, I you know, I, I know me. Um, next one here. This is one I have been looking forward to. And I went for, I decided, I decided to get a tub in this because I just thought, you know, it's a new pistachio oil, it's a new blend, and I'm so happy I went with the bigger size. Very happy. Um, next is Harold Fine Hair. First of all, I love the font on here. Sorry, my ring, my ring light is, uh, there we go. You can see the font on here. I love that. Very sophisticated and masculine. This is uh, one that I highly anticipated this one because of some of the notes that are in here. So that's why I went right to the tub. This is warm chestnuts, once again, smoky woods, and sweet vanilla. So that's by the fireplace. By the fireplace, oh man, the, the fragrance house is escaping me right now of by the fireplace. But it's fantastic. I, I love that. It's really good blended with bakery. It's really good blended by itself. You can even put heavy berry in with by the fireplace. I think would work beautifully. I grabbed this because of by the fireplace. And it's also blended with cashmere cedar and frosted sugar cookies. This one was poured on March 8th. So Harold Finehair. I'm not sure who Harold Finehair is. Um, but I'll assume it's Game of Thrones. Even though <laughs> might not be. I'm not sure. I'll have to look up who Harold Finehair is. I would have done so before I opened up this order and started filming, but like I said, I forgot what I ordered. <laughs> I, you know, didn't look at my, um, my email from when I ordered it. This has, um, if you are a fan of Tom Ford or, um, uh, Archipelago or, um, Hale in the past, Michael Kors, uh, and um, um, who makes Angel's Chair? Uh, I can't remember right now. Those, it's Tobacco Vanille, Angel's Chair, By the Fireplace, they all have that level heightened of smoky vanilla sophistication. So By the Fireplace, it's, it's tough to really describe it because it's so complicated. You know, the, these fragrance houses... Um, you know, Dior, YSL, um, Burrito, um, uh, Archipelago that makes, um, um, oh man, I can't remember the name of the one I'm thinking of, uh, those complicated types of fragrances, uh, is at the forefront of Harold Fine Hair. So if you've ever smelled any of those high-end expensive fragrances, this is going to be one that you would enjoy because my nose is picking up by the fireplace. Of course, I've already smelled by the fireplace, so I, I know what I'm smelling. But if you haven't smelled something like that, just be prepared for sophisticated, smoky vanilla, rich masculinity without being cologne. That's how I would describe this. Uh, the cashmere cedar, I'm not getting too much in here. The sugar cookies, is there's a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of creaminess to it, but also there's that sophisticated vanilla that's in here. I like this. It's very, um, it's very hard to describe, so I do apologize if I didn't do this justice. Um, I can only try. Uh, this is, I like this. This is one that I'm going to need just a little itty bitty piece for because it's going to be a strong one. Um, it's worth a try. You know, at least get a souffle if you want to give it a try. If you don't like it, then you're not really out of anything. It's just a small size. That's how I look at it. Okay. Next, next uh, column in here. Dapper Dawn. Okay. Dapper Dawn. 
Uh, this is one that I went back and forth on. Do I want to grab it? Do I not want to grab it? And what size do I want? Um, because Tiffany's, Tiffany's menu is extensive and she adds, sorry, I have to have to dab my nose for a second. She adds quite a few new blends every pre-order. It seems like it's just getting, sorry, my, it's allergy time. So my, my nose is letting me know, excuse me. Um, she she always adds a good bit of new blends to her menu, and then even for the ready to ship, she adds even you know ones that are just exclusive for the ready to ship. That most of the time make it back on a pre order, but this one I went back and forth with this because it has cocoa in it, and I am not a chocolate or cocoa wax fan, except for a couple of oils I have found here and there. This is one I. This is just Palo Santo, Creamy Cocoa, and Central Vanilla. It's simple when you think about it, but I've certainly never had Palo Santo and chocolate before or cocoa. So I thought I would give this a try. And I will tell you this right now. This, this is an incredible blend. The chocolate is sophisticated. It plays so well with Palo Santo. I would have never thought to try cocoa and Palo Santo together, but it just goes to show you Palo Santo is so versatile. It can be blended with just about everything out there in the oil world. This, these are beautiful. And I have been failing to show you the tops of the tubs, but each one has glitter on the top. Some, some of them very rarely are solid. Uh, you know, plain. Uh, most of the time, Tiffany puts a little bit of, of jazz on top of the uh, souffles, and then on the bottom, um, excuse me, the tubs, but on the bottom, there's a glitter down there too. Um, that is also carried over into her loaves and also into her souffles. So um, these, this is a phenomenal blend. I really, really like this blend. This is one that now smelling, I mean, hindsight's always 2020. I wish I would have got a tub in, but I took the chance that it's a cocoa that I'm not really going to like, but it has surprised me. You can get the vanilla in here. You get the Palo Santo, that creamy woodsiness, and that chocolate just enhances everything. This smells like a really, really good, rich, expensive cup of hot chocolate. That's what this smells like to me. Dapper Dawn. I think of um, Mad Men and uh, um, John Hamm's character. I think he was Dawn. I, I don't remember. I haven't seen Mad Men in a long time. Okay, this next one is a Bath and Body Works dupe or inspired by. This is Espresso Pink Lavender. Now, I haven't been in Bath and Body Works for a while, and I definitely have never smelled the Espresso uh, Pink Lavender candle that is in Bath and Body Works. The notes of this one is pink lavender, espresso beans, and creamy vanilla. Simple, but once again, I was intrigued. Uh, this is one that almost didn't make the cut because I wasn't quite sure lavender and espresso, do I really, I was thinking about buying a, a duplicate of another, of another one of these, but I decided to make this my wild card. Even though I love vanilla and I love espresso, I wasn't sure, um, excuse me, I, I like lavender and espresso. I wasn't uh, sure if I would like them together. But this one, I like I said, I, I, I can't compare it to the dupe from Bath & Body Works or the actual, the real thing, I should say. This, I really like this. It's tough to describe. Man, this is tough to describe because you're not getting outright lavender you're not getting outright espresso. These are married in such a way that these are just, it's somewhat sensual because it has that, that rich vanilla in it, that creamy vanilla that sweetens us up. This, you can get, it's almost like if you, the coffee isn't knock you down coffee. And smelling this at first sniff, it isn't just, it's not like a cup of espresso. It's more like you had an espresso in a ceramic cup and you drank it all and then you smell the cup and you have that residual little bit of coffee that's still in that cup. But it's not like the cup of coffee. Does that make sense? I hope it does. It's just a little bit of a lingering espresso to my nose. 
I like this. It's Man, is this tough to describe. This is going to be one that's going to cure for a little while to let those even, you know, marry even more. That's uh, This was poured on March 5th, so it's ready to go. But espresso and pink lavender. This was a, I'm glad I, I'm glad I got that one. Um, I am always one for Teddy B's that I make my order at the last minute possible. I am not one. I, I have my, I have my list. I make my list the day before the pre-order opens and I edit it many times. But then sometimes, you know, I if I I don't really necessarily like to see everybody's orders that they post because that is so easy to make us go in because we don't want to miss out on this or how do we miss this kind of a thing. And if you're trying to stick to a budget, it's like like I have been because you know my husband and I are going to Vegas. We are going to go to Egypt in a couple of years, and that's an expensive trip. That's one of our that might be our great. Um, our great vacation of our lifetime, even though we do want to make it to Europe. We would love to go to Greece and to Spain. My husband wants to go to Scotland to see the birthplace of golf. And we just, we want to travel. And that's something that, um, you know, both of us, my husband being in his mid forties and myself, you know, coming up onto 40 in a couple of months, we have some goals that we want to do. So especially with Teddy B's, because she does have premium products and her products are, um, I don't want to say overly priced because they're not, because you're getting incredible, exquisite blends and the best of the best quality of oils and waxes and supplies and such. Um, I'm very meticulous with my Teddy B's orders and um, I, I have to be because I need to keep my budget. And especially knowing that we have goals that we want to hit in the next several years, uh, not to mention our economy and such. Um, I just have to be very, I'm very meticulous and I put my order in last with Teddy Beads because then I really, I sit with it and I think, you know, do I, do I want this one? Is this one similar to one I've had before? Because she will have blends on her list that are similar to each other. And if I've smelled an oil from this, but not an oil from this and kind of a thing, I, I really try to make the best, the best intellectual order that I can. I know that sounds silly because it's just wax at the end of the day. But being that Teddy Bees is such an important part of my wax collection, I want to make smart purchases. Um, so I'm always one that makes purchases last. So if you ask me on the Friday when the pre-order opens, what did you order? I'm not going to know yet because I'm still thinking. Um, and I'm like that with all of my other purchases too. I'm always a last minute Larry. That's what I call myself. Um, I'm not like that in my life. I'm just like that with wax purchases. Um, so this next one here, uh, this is one that is, I don't want to call it a wild card, but it's one that I just wanted to try. This is Asgard. Asgard. I'm assuming it's Game of Thrones, but it, <laughs> it might not be. I'll have to look this one up. Uh, this is Soft Cotton, Cashmere Cedar, White Woods, and Luxurious Vanilla Orchid. What drew me in with this? This was on my maybe, my maybe list, as was Dopper, Dapper Dawn, and as was Espresso Pink uh, Lavender. So I have had her Cashmere Cedar. Cashmere Cedar is such a great scent. Um, White Woods is that woodsy aspect to it. But what really attracted me to this blend is the orchid. I love orchid. Orchid is, it's one of the most beautiful, delicate things that grow on this planet, in my opinion. Things that we've discovered, at least, I should say. I really, I really like that she chose to add a little bit of floral into a, la a laundry or a clean scent. So soft cotton, is a pretty strong laundry blend, um, excuse me, laundry oil, in my opinion. And the woodsiness of the cedar and the white woods is just going to accent that laundry even, even better. This is a gorgeous scent. This is, I would say it's, it's reminiscent of laundry, but it's not laundromat or clothespins or Tide or Gain or any or or fabric softener, anything that's definitely 1000% laundry. This is more kind of similar to flannel sheets or um, 
flannel sheets. I can't remember the names of all the of all the the oils out there right now. The something that you know when I was 20, 25 years old, I could think like that. Now, you know, also being a thyroid patient for almost nine years, um, the brain fog is real. So, um, I really, what I'm smelling in this, this is a tough one. I'm thinking of how to, to properly phrase this. The soft cotton, it's, I, I, the more that I smell this blend, the more that I am falling in love with it because this, I'm not a person that grabs for laundry scents a lot. I do have some in my life. I love fruity laundry, but this is a laundry blend that I've never had before. I've never thought to put it with an orchid or to put it with a cedar in laundry, but you know, I love the sophistication that Tiffany's, um, she's an incredible, she, her, her, that her, her brain just comes up with. She is an incredible, incredible blend master. I don't know if that's the correct term for, <laughs> for um, uh, you know, vendors who come up with these blends. But this is this is sophisticated, immaculate, unique. I'm. I get a I get a little bit of the cashmere cedar. I love cedar. It's my favorite wood. White Woods, I'm not quite sure what's in White Woods. I've, I've had a White Woods blend before, but I'm not sure if it was a single oil or if it was a blend with other oils. But this has a little bit of woodsiness to it. I'm not getting too much orchid, but this, but this is a clean laundry scent. But this is a sophisticated, expensive smelling laundry scent. That's Asgard. I like that one a lot. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to move this over here because as I'm getting older, sitting on the floor, my feet, my, my feet fall asleep. So I have to move my stuff so I can put my leg out here. So just excuse me while I adjust. Okay. The day that I can no longer sit on the floor again is going to be a sad day because I've sat on my floor my whole life. So it's coming. This next one is a new one to me. And um, when I first started shopping with Teddy Bees, I think this blend was on that pre-order list. And I haven't seen it since. I've just seen it talked about. This is the Dornishman's Wife. And I love that gorgeous, beautiful purple color there. Very, very nice. This is Palo Santo, blackberries, marshmallow fireside, and a little bit of lemon. So... Um, blackberries is one that I've got to be careful with because sometimes it's a little medicinal to me, but I've had a blackberry blend of Tiffany's before and it wasn't like that. So I felt comfortable giving this one a try. So, um, I, this is probably a Game of Thrones blend. I'm just, like I said, I'm assuming <laughs> everything is, um, the blackberry by far is at the forefront here. I'm getting a little bit of the woodsiness of the Palo Santo, just a little bit, not too much. And the smoky sweetness that we all love of Marshmallow Fireside, if you like that oil, that's there too. So in that one quick sniff, you can get the juiciness of that, that hearty berry. Blackberry is a hearty berry, in my opinion. You get the woodsiness and the smoothness of the Palo Santo, and then you get a little bit of that Marshmallow Fireside. I'm not getting lemon because it's just a hint. It's probably in here just to balance a little bit of the blackberry. I like this. This is, I'm glad I got this in a souffle. This is one that um, I don't melt a lot of blackberry, straight fruit blackberry in my home just because I'm, you know, it, it's just one that I'm trying to, to let it grow on me. So that is the Dornishman's Wife. Next, let's see here. Anything but basic. This is one that I did not have on my list, uh, but this was in my third order because I saw so many of you talk about it. And I think even Tiffany talked about it or somebody talked about this blend. And I thought I have to give it a try because if it's anything but basic, I will like it. So... <laughs> Uh, this was poured on March 11th. This is vanilla cotton candy, lychee, sparkling champagne, 
orange blossom, neroli, sandalwood, and amber. So that's anything but basic. This is a very nice blend. This is a perfect, perfect summer blend. I'm really smelling the lychee and the orange blossom. Sometimes orange blossom to my nose can pull a little bit sunscreen, but this doesn't, this isn't. I'm just, I know that a lot of the sunscreen blends I've had in the past or the heavy beach blends have orange blossom in it, but it just gives a really great pop of brightness to this. Lychee is not used very often, but I'm glad Tiffany found the oil because this is really good. And a little bit of... Man, this is really hard to describe. This this is a perfect name, anything but basic. I don't know if this is a perfume that she added things to, like the cotton candy or not. I'm not sure. But orange blossom, lychee, a little bit of amber, a little bit of sandalwood. This is definitely, I might even pull this baby out this summer because this is, it's not beachy. It's not fruity. It's, it's one of a kind. It's very unique. This unfortunately is one, if you're going to, if you're interested, you just kind of have to buy one and smell it because I can't put that into, I can't put that into words. You know, some of these blends are just so hard to describe. And this is one that I'm, um, it's, it's very sweet. It's not sickingly sweet because I would tell you that. Sometimes cotton candy, I don't have a lot of cotton candy blends that I gravitate to because some of them, most of them historically with, with me, they've been a little bit too sweet and just too, just too linear. So I was trying to stay away, but that had lychee and champagne and neroli and different things in there. So I'm glad that I saw the post when I did because Facebook isn't showing me many teddy bees. So I don't know <laughs> what's happening in the group, really, um, especially Tiffany's updates. I didn't see any updates from her on this pre-order at all. So I had to actually go and look in the group and search for it. So Facebook thinks it's smart and sometimes it's annoying. So... <laughs> <laughs> this next one here, this is one I actually got two of because this is one that hasn't, excuse me, I bumped my tripod. This one is one that hasn't been around, um, hasn't been offered a lot, but I do remember, here's my second one in here. I do remember, uh, Tiffany saying that her candy corn oil is pretty damn good. So this a sweet Halloween and I went for two of them so sweet Halloween is candy corn vanilla cupcakes and sweet vanilla frosting so this is gonna be sweetness I am NOT a candy corn person I don't care for the taste of candy corn it's just a little bit of honey smelling to me a little bit of marshmallow but I've never had it in wax really I've stayed away from it because it just never seemed I don't want to say appetizing because we're not eating it but it just it didn't seem um like it would be something that I would enjoy but I did see several people talk this blend up and I did remember Tiffany talked about her candy corn oil so I gave it a try and I got two so <laughs> this one man This smells like the most perfect vanilla cake with frosting you could ever want in your life. This is a simple blend, but I think it's that candy corn because vanilla cupcakes I've smelled. Sweet vanilla frosting, I mean, you can only do so much with cake and frosting, but this is super good. Super good. It isn't like what I thought it would be. This is a very rich, not artificial, but just rich. I've smelled this before in my life somewhere. It's not candy corn, but it's a dessert that I've had somewhere in my life before. But it's it's cake and it's vanilla and it's sweet and this is fantastic. I'm glad I got two of you, sweet Halloween. You're delicious. <laughs> this next one is one I've had before. 
This was one that was hidden on the pre-order because it wasn't on her menu in her Facebook group, but it was on the drop down on her website. This is the North, and I know this is a Game of, a Game of Thrones um, uh, member. I've had this before. I actually have my souffle from a couple of years ago in my melting tote right now. So this one is Vanilla Balsam, Palo Santo, Marshmallow Fireside, and a Hint of Smoldering Wood. Um, firewood. I really like this blend. I've had, I've, I've melted it a little bit. I was doing it more when it was those days where, because a couple of weeks ago it snowed. I mean, it, we had horrible weather on Easter, rain and snow and coldness and all sorts of things. Uh, we've had up and down, um, weather, a little bit of snow, a little bit of rain, 80 degrees back down to snow. It's just been a little bit of everything. So I chose to whip out the North and and melt it because there were days where I was still wearing my winter pajamas and I was cold you know in the mornings working in, in my office so this one here it actually she kept the color the same as last time because it's this dark brown like this you can get the smoldering firewood right off the bat just hit your nose with this um, the one that's cured several years it doesn't have right wham off the bat the smokiness that this has it's kind of died down a little bit uh, what I smell more in that one is the Palo Santo which I'm not complaining about it's great I'm just you know trying to compare what I'm freshly smelling here versus the one that I've had for a couple of years I really like this this smells like if you had a bonfire and it's the smoldering the smoldering embers or the wood that still has smoke going off of it, or if you've been into a place that has, that's that's had um, a fire going in it or like a fireplace, this has a fireplace scent. This reminds me of where my dad lives in his home. He has a large stone fireplace and he has a wood burning stove down in the basement level so he can heat his home that way. Um, and he designed it that way because he always wanted to have a wood burning stove um, for the winter time. So this is, this makes me think of my dad's house and the fireplace too. So the, the Palo Santo in this does come out with age, you know, like I'm attesting to with, with the one that I have. Um, the vanilla balsam, I don't get too much of it, and I don't get it right now with the one that I'm working on. Um, I think it's just there for a little bit of outdoorsiness. Um, maybe if it wasn't in there, we would miss it. But this one here, I'm glad I grabbed one of these because it's one that you just need a little bit of a little piece of. It goes, you know, for a long time. It has a lot of lasting, lasting power. Power. Uh, this next one here is. Um, I've had a sample of this in the past. This is Gran Canaria. Gran Canaria. I don't know what that name exactly is, but this is going to be another one that I look up. Um, we have Tiffany's Famous Beach Treats, which is her beach nights. She just chooses to call hers beach treats. Uh, peach nectar, jasmine, violets, and notes of fresh citrus and softwoods. So this is quite a bright floral scent with peach. Jasmine, peach, floral and peach, they go together so beautifully in my opinion. I don't get I don't get too much um of her beach nights right off the bat. When I melted this, I had a little sample of it a couple of years ago. When I melted it, it didn't really scream beach nights either. This is heavy on the peach and this is a really good sophisticated peach. It's not a cat pee peach or a cheap peach. Um if you know what I you know what I mean like some of them just are they're artificial smelling. This reminds me of really like a white peach of a more delicate um scented peach. Peach is my my favorite stone fruit. I love peaches. But sometimes the white peach and even in perfumes that I've had and lotions and creams over the years, white peach is just a little bit more delicate. And that's what's coming to my nose in this. Of course, you have the violets. Violet is another great floral blend or floral option, I should say. I love the peach and the violet. That's why I got this one because I thought, you know, I wish I had a little bit of a bigger size to try uh, before, but this one hasn't been back since that order a couple of years ago. So I chose to grab this one. Um, this is a beautiful spring and summer blend. It's nice and bright floral and citrus, and it's really good. I like that one a lot. Train's gonna go by. You can probably hear that. Some of these here, 
it looks like um, trying to get all these souffles here before I dig down into the next layer. Okay. That'll give the train one more time to toot toot, unless he already passed the crossing right down here. I think he's done, okay. This next one is new to me. This is Witching Hour. I love this beautiful uh, dark purple color. Uh, this is Midnight Jasmine, Tonka Bean, Mahogany, Black Currant, Sweet Marshmallow, and Softwoods. Another dark, mysterious, uh, spooky blend that I'm here for. I love these types of blends. The one thing that jumps out to me on this one on cold is that jasmine and currant. This has a little bit, a little bit, reminds me a little itty bitty bit of uh, Midnight Rosewood, which is in my top three scents of, of Teddy Bees. This, I don't remember if that has currant in it or not, or if it's the jasmine, I'm not sure. But this is, man, tough to describe. This is dark, mysterious, spooky. This is maybe what the witch from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs smells, her house smells like, her potions and her cauldron and all sorts of things. A little bit of dark from the woodsy, the woodsiness of the mahogany and soft woods. Tonka is in there. I don't really know what Tonka bean smells like by itself, but I know if it's missing from something. It just, it's used in a heck of a lot of fragrances and creams and lotions and such. And this jasmine, this Midnight Jasmine, I think it's the same oil that she's used in some of her other jasmine blends that are escaping me right now. It's, it, it's, a, it's a nice blend. I would say you probably should like a perfumey floral if you're going to give this one a try that's just my opinion but this is witching hour and i like anything with current in it too so i i tend to grab those ones uh this next one is blushed blushed i think this one's been back a few times before but i never bought it this <clears throat> is vanilla birch blended with peach flesh strawberries warm woods and marshmallows I love peach and strawberry together. So just, it's they're perfect together in my opinion. Let's see what this one smells like. This one is not heavy peach like Grand Canaria was. That's a true peach nectar, a true peach flesh. This is a lighter, the peach is here, yes. But what I'm picking up on the vanilla birch is blended with a fruit, and that fruit that I'm smelling is strawberry. I'm getting a little bit of peach in the background, not much. Um, with that being said, someone might smell this and be like, oh, that's a peach. But to me, I'm getting creamy strawberry, a little bit of creamy peach, light creamy peach with uh, vanilla birch, and a little bit of creaminess from the marshmallow. I'm not getting too much woods right now, but this is, I think this is one of her sensual blends. This is great for a bedroom, for a bathroom, you know, soak time in the tub or meditation or, you know, pampering yourself with a face mask, self-care day. This is nice. I like this. I, I tend to try a little bit of Tiffany's sensual blends. So this is blushed. Very feminine. This next one here uh, was probably in my second or third order that I went back in for. And I think this one, I think Tiffany also um, posted about this one in her group. This is a new one in the I Heart line. This is I Heart Vanilla Pear. And I took out the souffle already. I Heart Vanilla Pear. So this one here is um, creamy vanilla marshmallow, vanilla milkshake, and marshmallow mag and magnolias that's her boardwalk marshmallow clouds which lately has been growing on me like i have i have a couple other vendors that i've made some customs with and i've used boardwalk marshmallow clouds i'm surprising myself it's that perfume 
beautiful feminine marshmallow scent. So the creamy vanilla marshmallow, vanilla milkshake and boardwalk marshmallow is the I heart vanilla part. And she added sweet pear and sugar nectar to this. So this is pear. This is beautiful. This is gorgeous. I really, really like this. Pear and boardwalk marshmallow clouds is beautiful together. It's not, it's not too, too much pear. It's the perfect balance of pear. And it's creamy, marshmallow, milkshakes, boardwalk marshmallow, pear. It's a little perfumey because like I said, to me, boardwalk marshmallow clouds is perfumey. But the pear, I just can't stop smelling this. It's juicy. It's authentic. It's, if you remember Pearberry from Bath and Body Works, even though, I mean, Pearberry had, had peach in it, a little bit of peach in it, raspberry and pear, I think that's what it was. The pear that I think was used in Bath and Body Works, it's similar to the pear that I'm smelling in here. This is, I mean, this kind of could be body care-ish, in my opinion. It's definitely not bakery, because there isn't bakery in here. It's perfumey pear. This is a beautiful fragrance. I love that one. Beautiful fragrance, Tiffany. I heart vanilla pear. That's this one here. Okay. I got more souffles than I thought. <laughs> I still have tubs in here though. Okay, witches be crazy for beach treats. Now this was a no-brainer for me because I love Tiffany's beach treats and I definitely love witches be crazy. This is birthday cake, pecan waffles, sugar cookie dough, and a pinch of cinnamon spice vanilla blended with beach treats. This one is going to be a well-loved blend in my home. This is fantastic. That witches be crazy is so perfection to me. It's perfection to me. So perfect, I should say. I'm getting just a little bit of beach treats in the background. It's not overly saturated with the beach treats, which is okay because beach treats does come alive on warm. When you put a beach treats blend in your warmer, you know it is after it hits the heat. But I love this because it's Tiffany's Beach Treats blends well with anything, as does her Witches Be Crazy. So this one was a no-brainer no for me. Heavy Bakery. PB&J. Okay, PB&J. This is toasted bread, fresh jam, and a drizzle of honey. So, this is one that, you know, I went back and forth on because I wasn't sure... I wasn't sure if I wanted to to try this one because I, I remember smelling the Bath and Body Works candle and I know Tiffany, I think I think she's had either the she's had the dupe and then she's had her own version of it. Kind of like she has her strawberry pound cake. She has the dupe and then she has her own strawberry pound cake. So this one doesn't have bat, a Bath and Body Works on it, so I'm gonna assume that this is her rendition of it. Um I'm getting a mixture of raspberry and honey. The honey is really, really strong on this to me. The bread, I'm not sure what type of bread. It doesn't smell like a baguette or it doesn't smell like other uh, um, toasted, um, excuse me, other fresh baked bread oils that I've smelled before. This one, on first sniff, it doesn't smell like a traditional peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but it's, it's peanut butter with jam and a lot of honey on top. That's what I'm smelling with this. And it's funny, peanut butter isn't in the notes, but I'm getting a little bit of, I'm getting roasted nuts in this, roasted peanuts. This is one, I'm not quite sure how you feel about this one. It's not bad. It's just, it's, it's a different, it's a different take on peanut butter and jelly. It's not what I was expecting. So this is one I'm going to have to sniff when it's a little bit older. This is almost a little over a month old, March, March 12th. So I don't hate this one, but this is one that, um, I'm going to have to see how it, it grows on me. So that's PP and J.
lavender cream. Oh man, lavender cream. I love my lavender scents. This is lavender marshmallows and vanilla sugar waffle cone. This was poured back on March 1st. Lavender cream. So Tiffany has phenomenal lavender. Whether she takes it on the bakery route or she does Tiff's favorite ba Tiff's favorite lavender, which is lavender and coconut milk and marshmallows, which is gorgeous. I love it. Lavender coconut milk was one of my first scents I ever smelled with fender wax. So it's, it just, you know, you never forget your first kind of a thing. This one I grabbed in a small size because I don't remember at this time. You're probably because I have a lot of lavender right now. This is just, it's, it's sweet lavender with marshmallow and a little bit of vanilla cone. It's not, it's nothing crazy, but you don't mess with perfection. This is sweet lavender at its finest. And like I said, Tiffany has a fantastic lavender oil and she's taken it a thousand different directions. And this is good. Um, last pre-order before this, she had salty lavender. And um, I think it's lavender with salty Sierra. I don't get too much salty Sierra from that lavender. I get the lavender that I'm getting in this right here. Just that creamy, rich, authentic, sweet lavender. And I love it. I can't get enough. Next is Lost in the Orange Grove. I think this one... Um, I don't know if this is a dupe for a fragrance or if this is... Um, her, her take on something, or if this is just a brand new blend. This is lemongrass, basil leaf, rosemary, clementines, orange peel, and ambrette. The note that drew me in on this one is the basil leaf. I love, I love basil. There's nothing like basil in cooking. I love basil. I have fresh basil all the time in my home. There's nothing like it in tomato sauce. Just, it gives a little bit, the, the oil of the basil leaf. So when I saw this blend, this is a blend, I thought it, 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 it's going to be a little borderline for me. You don't see me melting a lot of straight citrus or straight orange blends. Grapefruits, oranges, clementines, tangerines, any of those. Because sometimes they can be a little bit not, not appeasing to me. But I took a chance with this one because... It has the addition of the lemongrass. Now I like lemongrass. Lemon glass, lemon glass, lemon grass. Lemon grass is just so bright and uplifting and it's a nice aromatherapy addition. Uh, lemon grass isn't used all that much in my opinion. And it's got basil leaf in it. It has rosemary, so it has another aromatic in there. Um, and clementine and orange peel and ambrette. So this one here, This smells like basil and orange. This almost smells like a uh, Mrs. Myers cleaner. It does. It, it's not that, of course, but it just it smells like something that I would get from Mrs. Myers. Mrs. Myers uses a lot of essential oils and uplifting bright, but also what you're smelling is the lemongrass. Lemongrass is so strong and it is very sophisticated and it's very unique. I should say, not sophisticated, uh, unique. And if you smelled lemongrass, you'll know it's in here. So lemongrass, a little bit of orange, a little bit of basil. This is perfect for cleaning day. This is perfect for when you want to have your windows open, just wafting through your home, just that nice brightening, wake you up kind of a smell. That lemongrass is very dominant in here. Let's get you back in your home here. An hour and three minutes. Okay, this next one. Uh, this was a last minute purchase of mine. This was Laid on the Beach and Strawberry Boom Boom. This is a blend of beach treats and marshmallow clouds layered with strawberry pound cake and creme de boom boom, which is boom boom cream from Sol de Janeiro. So boom boom cream is fantastic blended with anything. Strawberry pound cake, boom boom cream, uh, boardwalk marshmallow clouds and beach treats. I thought that's a combination. So this 
is layered. So I don't want to up dump this because I don't want to get glitter on my carpet and such. But half of this is going to be the two cents and the other half is going to be the other two cents. The one that I'm smelling here on the top is the beach treats and the marshmallow clouds. But underneath is going to be that boom boom. So when I chop this, I'm going to chop it a little bit differently than I traditionally chop my teddy bees because I want to get both layers together in one piece. So this one, I'm happy I grabbed this because frankly, I don't have a lot of boom boom uh, scents in my collection right now. Um, I was actually <laughs> going to purchase quite a bit from a vendor that um, is not operating right now. Uh, so I was going to stock up, but I'm glad that I at least have this. So I'm going to have to be looking for Boom Boom stuff uh, to bring some of that back in my collection. Uh, witching Hour. I got another Witching Hour. I didn't realize I ordered two of those. I know that I, um, I know that I ordered two of the Sweet Halloween. Okay, this next one is a wild card for me. If you watch me and you know me, this is one that is a wild card. This is just vanilla. Because I don't do just vanilla. I don't like just vanilla. It's not enough for my nose. I need more. Madagascar vanilla, creamed vanilla, lily of the valley, and musk. Okay. Madagascar vanilla is one of my favorite vanillas out there in the world. It's so, it's so good. It's different. If you've never smelled it before, uh, try something that has Madagascar vanilla in it. Bath and Body Works used to have Madagascar vanilla in their line and it's been discontinued. It's in the vault. I've had it before and that's when I first got my experience with Madagascar vanilla. And then I moved on to Absolute Vanilla from Beekman 1802. Beekman 1802 is a, it's a skincare goat milk based line that has home laundry stuff and cleaning stuff and skin stuff and creams and soaps and things. And I've been shopping with Beekman 1802 for a long time. And their Madagascar vanilla is true, true Madagascar vanilla. So what sold me on this was the fact that it wasn't just regular vanilla or um, sweet vanilla. I don't know what creamed vanilla is supposed to smell like, but I thought, you know, I'll give it a shot because it has Lily of the Valley, which is a little bit of a floral. It might be something special. This one, I can smell Madagascar vanilla. This is going to be one that I warm in a small space because this is not going to be a strong performer unless it surprises me. Um, this smells kind of, what does this smell like? I've, I've smelled something like this before in my life. One of Teddy, one of Tiffany's other, other blends I've had in my life. I think, um, her I Heart Vanilla has a little bit of Boardwalk Marshmallow Clouds in it, but this is very similar to the original I Heart Vanilla. Um, it, it doesn't have Boardwalk Marshmallow Clouds in it, but it's along those lines of that original I Heart Vanilla. So, I like this. I do. It's going to be one that I'm probably going to blend with something. I'm just being being full disclosure because it's not going to be enough for me in my home to get a satisfactory scent. If I'm melting something, I want to smell it. Um, and just vanilla. So I'm glad I got a little size to try. That's what you do. That's what I do at least. This next one is a repeat purchase of mine. I'm just trying to see, make sure I get everything out of here. I still have some more things in here. Okay, this next one is uh, was a was a runaway winner a couple of pre-orders ago, and it's part of her. I think it's I think it's part of her um, Game of Thrones line, and one of I that I've had before. This is Emma of Normandy. So Emma of Emma of Normandy is a sensual blend: dark berries, sensual orchid, and warm vanilla. This is. Along the same lines as the one that had the orchid in it before, what what blend was it? The um, I don't remember right now. I can't see it here. This is very strong. I'm working on my souffle or my tub. I can't remember which one I chopped up. Um, I'm working on it very slowly because this is a blend that is 
it's rich. It's not a it's not a blend I think to melt all the time just because of how strong it is. It has berries. It's a little bit of floral. And unless it's rose, I don't pull for a lot of florals in my life. If it's blended with something like an orchid or a violet or something, sure. But when something is as fruity floral as this is it's one that I melt very sparingly that that's just that's just me and how I roll but the dark berries in here is it's it smells like it's a mixture of blackberry elderberry currant a little bit of the really rich rich dark berries and the orchid in here gives it that bump of floral and it truly is a floral. This does kind of smell like a perfume too. It's a complicated blend. This is really hard to describe. Um, a little bit of vanilla in here, which I'm frankly not even getting, but this is a floral berry blend that a lot of you guys like, and um, I'm in that group. Emma of Normandy. I like the pink and the white. Okay, next. Lavender Bonfires. Lavender Bonfires, another lavender blend. This is Sweet Lavender, Cashmere Bonfire, Toasted Marshmallow, and a Hint of Vanilla Balsam. This was poured on March 6th. Okay. That same sweet, classic lavender that she uses is really good in this. So the difference between the vanilla one back here, the lavender and cream, this one is just lavender with vanilla. This is lavender with vanilla and marshmallow, yes. But the thing that sets this one apart is you get a little bit of extra sensuality with that cashmere and you get that that um, that bonfire, you know, that, that little bit of smokiness. This is not as smoky as... Um, uh, Harold Fine Hair and not as smoky as Whipstaff Manor. It's not that type of smoky. This is just a wisp, just a little sprinkle of um, smokiness to it. I like this. I'm going to have to get this one going. Um, this just Tiffany's lavender is so strong and it's so dominant. It takes over any blend that's in. So no matter which one you get, you're going to have to. Um, be in love with the lavender because sometimes you know lavender can be added into a blend just you know as an afterthought but these ones when tiffany uses her lavender i've noticed that she makes it for um in the forefront like the most dominant which i appreciate because my husband and i love lavender and you can thank marty my husband for asking me to buy more lavender stuff because I didn't have a lot in my collection and now I'm just, I can't get enough. I'm melting lavender through my work day. I'm melting lavender in bedtime. I'm melting it downstairs in my open concept. I just can't get enough lavender. And it also, you know, when I look back at some of my older videos, when I first started my channel, I look at how different my my um nose has changed and ones that i gravitate to you know back in the beginning i i've always i've always liked sophisticated blends i have been a perfume girl for a long time i love my i love cosmetic companies and skincare and i i've always used stuff that makes you smell good and stuff that makes your your skin shine that just just that's just me I put them in the same category, you know, things that smell good and face care and shampoos and all those things. And, you know, having to battle with my trichotillomania and my bald spot, taking me many years to be comfortable with using um, certain hair products. You know, when I was younger, I would have so much hairspray to build volume in my hair. I looked like a mess when I was younger. But um, I look at my older videos and... Uh, see what was more important to me and what the, what was I gravitated to three years ago, two and a half years ago, yeah, a little two and a half years ago, versus what am I grabbing for now? I really wasn't melting a lot of sophisticated, complex blends. I was sticking to bakery and a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I look at some customs I ordered, and I'm like, man, I would never order that now, or I wouldn't have blended that with that. We are all growing. You know, we're all eternal students, in my opinion. Myself, I'm always learning something. And um, 
just, I'm so happy that Teddy Bees came into my life. And my friend Vivian introduced me to Teddy Bees a couple of years ago, and I'm very grateful that she did because I would see Teddy Bees all the time in these stash groups. And I'm like, what is this Teddy Bees? Oh, she only opens a couple of times a year. Her stuff's tough to get. So I kind of, you know, kind of like Glitterati, I didn't really put too much mental energy into it because it wasn't something that I thought I was ever going to get. But then I ordered for the first time a couple of years ago and I've been ordering every time since and I have just fallen deeply in love with the formula, the sophistication of the blends. And I, I know I've said that a thousand times in this video, but I just want to to express my gratitude for having these types of blends out there that you can't get from any vendor out there. I mean, in my opinion, you can get, you can get cupcakes and strawberry pound cake and um, Palo Santo, even though there's different Palo Santos from any vendor. But these sophisticated blends, like this is definitely one I can't get anywhere else. And... As a customer, to me, that's what keeps me coming back and coming back and coming back. You know, just like a restaurant that makes your favorite chicken parm, you're going to keep going there when you want that. So now I'm thinking about my favorite Italian restaurant back where I'm from in Pennsylvania that my uh, my dad goes there. He doesn't go there very often because he's, uh, um, he's widowed now. Um, his lady friend passed almost four years ago, and he doesn't go out to dinner very much. But hopefully if I get back there uh, later this fall, like I'm hoping I will, we can go there a couple of times. Uh, anyways, back to the wax. I like to give a little bit of a little bit of story to this madness <laughs> here. Um, okay, <clears throat> this next one was a wild card just because of my husband. This is Key Lime Pie, excuse me, Key, Key West Lime ice cream and cake. The best key limes in Florida blended with the creamiest vanilla ice cream, toasty graham crackers, and a side of rich white cake and salty sea air. There's a lot going on in this, but my dear husband doesn't really care for a lot of lime. So I didn't, I, I've never, I've never had Tiffany's lime before. And I thought, gosh, what an opportunity to try this lime. So I got a souffle of it here. This is good. You know, sometimes lime can be so wham in your face and it can be a little putrid. That's what my husband feels. Like he knows if I've melted something lime that's a bad lime. He'll he will ask me to, you know, can you turn that off because I don't really I don't like that at all. And I try my best to not have anything in my home where that's the reaction he gets. And lime, this one is going to be a good one because it is not fake it's not too it's not too unbalanced where you can't smell any of the other stuff in it it's just lime this is very creamy it's rich you can smell the the creaminess of the cake batter you can definitely smell the richness and creaminess of the vanilla ice cream the salty sea air is just there but it accents that lime so well you know, lime is so astringent. I love lime don't get me wrong but lime can be so it, it needs it needs toned down a little bit. And I love that she chose to mix a little bit of toasted uh, graham cracker in here because, you know, you have your key lime pie, you have your crust, you have your creamy uh, whipped up filling, you have your whipped cream on top, you can even have ice cream. This is good. I like this a lot. This is perfect spring and summer scent when, you know, we're eating all those cool pies. Oh, I love this one. So good. Okay. Next, this was a repurchase of mine. Amber Harvey likes this blend. <laughs> this is Oracle of Dusk. This is a repurchase of mine. Oracle of Dusk was one that was in a ready to ship after a couple of pre-orders ago, I think. Um, it was one that Tiffany poured just for the ready to ship. And this one, um, I bought a, I didn't do a video for that ready to ship. I got six tubs and I just, I didn't have time to film for whatever reason. And it was like a month after that ready to ship shipped and I didn't want to do a video. So I haven't talked about Oracle of Dusk on my channel before. I got Oracle of Dusk and Lux Linen and a couple of other ones. I don't remember now, but when those were offered in tubs only, 
is when I grab this one. This is Black Raspberry Bergamot Velvet Rose. There's my girl there. Midnight Jasmine, which we had in another blend here. Patchouli and Precious Woods. So this one is really sophisticated and complicated, but in a good way. This one, the first thing I'm smelling in this, what attracted me to Oracle of Dusk, of course, was that rose. I will buy anything that has rose in it. I love it. It has patchouli, sweet patchouli. It's got a little bit of citrus from the bergamot. It has rose in here. So it's a little creamy. But what makes this different is, is that raspberry. That raspberry, black raspberry at that. It plays so well. This is a fruity floral. And almost a perfumey scent. But it has a little bit of powderiness to it. And, and um, it's very delicate. It's really good. That jasmine's in here. The raspberries in here. That rose. This is a gorgeous scent. Very gorgeous scent. I also think this is Game of Thrones. But Marty and I are going to be watching Game of Thrones. And I told him that's a big commitment because there are long episodes and no commercials. And he's ready. So we're going to watch Game of Thrones. Um, this is one. I really like this one. I had, I was going to get a tub, but I thought I would just get this because I already have a tub and I didn't want to, I wanted to try some stuff, other stuff. Okay. So this next one here, Earl Ingstad. I don't know who Earl is, but my grandpa's name was Earl. So um, I got with this one. Uh, this is also one that's right up my alley. Um, cardamom cream, Palo Santo, Earl Grey tea, sweet pastries, and sugar crystals. So the one that attracted me with this one is that Earl Grey tea. I love Earl Grey tea. It's one of my favorite teas. Earl Grey tea is my favorite tea to drink, and I like Lady Grey too, which doesn't have the bergamot in it. It's a little bit smoother. But this one is, I think... Uh, this is part of her sensual line because I've noticed some of her ones with tea and her ones with cream in here are delicate and gentle and not powerhouses. But not every scent is meant to be a powerhouse. This is a beautiful bathroom scent. Let's see. I'm getting the cardamom cream and a little bit of the Earl Grey. It's very creamy. And I'm getting... A little bit of the woodsiness of the Palo Santo, but it's very gentle. The pastry is not so much, not getting a lot of that. Um, and it's sweetened up with just sugar. This is a this is almost like you go into an English bed and breakfast and you get a cup of tea with a lot of cream in it. I like this. This is a, a sensual, delicate blend. I'm going to let this cure quite some time because it is very light, but that's probably the nature of that blend. Okay, let's see what I have in here. I'm going to, here's another Asgard. I don't, I don't remember ordering two Asgard, but I guess I did too. We'll, we'll see. Um, let's see. Um, I don't remember what I ordered, like I said. I'm just trying to make sure that I get everything out of my out of the box here so I don't forget anything because we're nearing the end. Let's see. There's one more in here. Pardon the interruption here. Just making sure. I don't have a sample in here this time, so I don't I can't talk about the little sample unless it's in all this grass. But no, I don't I don't see a sample in here this time. So that's what I'm digging around for like a dog in here to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. Woo! Next. Couple more souffles and then we have tubs. Pacific Northwest Winter. I love this green, first of all, this olive green. Uh, this is fresh snow, pine sap, fresh mistletoe, vanilla balsam, 
the slight hint of cranberries and burning fireplaces off in the distance. So this is one that was offered a few times ago and I didn't get it because I don't remember at the time. I think this was offered during a um, fall heavy or a winter heavy pre-order and I just had gotten a ton of these types of scents. So I waited on this one. This is vanilla balsam if there was ever a vanilla balsam blend. Vanilla balsam. I don't get too much cranberry. I get a little bit of smokiness, but this is mostly mistletoe and vanilla balsam and green. You think about the Pacific Northwest, that Oregon, Washington coastline that I hopefully will get to go to one day. Um, I'm not getting too much snow. There's almost a, a, a cool and crispness that is in this when you sniff it, but this is a green scent. This is a, a tree scent which it should be. It's Pacific Northwest Winter. So that's this one. Okay. First of her name. This is one that a lot of you guys have been talking about the last couple of days. This is Whipped Vanilla Citrus Infused Cream White Blossoms Decadent Lemon Cakes Candied Lime and Vanilla Sugar. What grabbed me on this was the lemon and lime because I love both of those, especially lemon. This is very vanilla with gentle touches of lemon and lime and a little bit of extra citrus that I'm not putting together right now. This is... It's I'm trying to think of what it's similar to. Oh, it's not coming to me right now. But but this is this is pretty much vanilla, a little bit of citrus with gentle lemon and lime. I like this. This is this is a beautiful fragrance, and I can see why a lot of people are talking about it because it's just it's there's just something in it that just makes you want to keep smelling it. That beautiful balance of lemon and lime just together. This is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Beautiful fragrance. It's kind of tough to describe. Beautiful fragrance. Okay. Rain and Woods. This is one I've purchased multiple times before, and I will always purchase Rain and Woods. This one is so good. Ah. Oh. This is crunchy leaves, wet flowers, clove, balsam, patchouli, and sandalwood. If this was the only outdoors blend I could melt for the rest of my days, this would be it. I would be okay with this. This is such a good scent. You have, ah, a little bit of, wet flowers is hard to describe. It's, it doesn't, it's almost like you're walking in a forest that has leaves that have fallen and foliage and stuff that's just starting to decay. But it's, it doesn't smell bad, like rotten or anything. It's just the, the mood that Tiffany's trying to evoke with this is just rain and woods. You're out walking in the woods in the rain and rain water awakens up the earth and things smell differently. Just why you walk outside and you can smell the rain and the moisture in the air. That's what I get from this. You know, growing up in the country and growing growing up on not a farm like you would think, but it's out in the country. I grew up with horses and dogs and such, and my dad still has cattle. I've walked in the woods many times. And, you know, being being an only child and a child that was subjected to heavy bullying when I was when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time by myself with my with my dog Amber. She was a golden retriever my best friend. Um, from the ages of five to 13, I had Amber and Amber was my best friend. And Amber and I went on so many hikes and so many uh, playing in the creek. And just those were the days where no cell phones existed. So if I fell and got hurt, you know, I'd have to yell and hopefully in the hollow, they could hear me. Um, I, I'm, I grew up in Pennsylvania. So just imagine the, that, that type of out, that outdoorsiness. So this smells, you know, just like 
you are put in the middle of a little meadow or a little or outdoorsy you have a little bit of wood a little bit of leaves rain moisture and I love that Tiffany put in the earthiness of the leaves, the crunchy leaves, and the patchouli and sandalwood. I am so happy that I can have this blend because I melt this when I miss Pennsylvania, which is quite often. Um, I melt this when I it's a little dreary outside or change of the weather in the end of summer, beginning of fall, or the segue between fall creeping into winter. I like this as a fall blend. That's Rain and Woods, and that's what that one means to me. Next is Warlord. I went right, oh man, I went right for <laughs> the tub of this boy. Warlord. This has Tonka bean, vanilla oak, spice praline, notes of cocoa, incense, milky tuberose, and tobacco vanille. You know why? Because in my opinion, this is Angel Share. It has bourbon, praline, vanilla, tonka, and the tobacco vanille is Tom Ford. It's sophisticated as hell. This, to my nose, in my heart, is a Angel Share blend, and I can't get enough. I love this. I love this. This, ugh. This is, this is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I'm not even going to try to attempt to, to describe tobacco vanille or, um, angel share because they're just too complicated. But if this is something that you're interested in, you know, try a souffle at least. Warlord is gorgeous. Princess Katia, Princess Katia. Vanilla birch, beech treats, Moroccan rose, there's my baby again, and fireside marshmallows. So I had to get this in a tub. I had to get this in a tub. I love that color, first of all. It's one of my favorite colors in the world. This has rose, Moroccan rose, beech treats, and vanilla birch. I've never had beech treats and rose before, so I had to get this in a big size. This one... Um, the other Beach Nights blend that I had is, I don't remember which one it is right now. Um, this one is dominantly Beach Treats, whereas the other one I had, the Beach Treats was in the back of my sniff. So that just goes to show you how versatile uh, Beach Treats is. Uh, this, I smell a little bit of marshmallow. I get a little bit of fire, um, excuse me, a little bit of vanilla birch and Beach Treats. I'm not getting a lot of rose at all. But I'm going to let this cure. This was poured in February 28th, so it's it's ready to go. But I'm just going to let this cure and have this beautiful masterpiece when I want something different. That's how I'm going to look at that. These are This is the most amount of tubs I've ordered. And then this last one I got is one of her OGs. I love these cow print tubs. Like, I think cow print is so cute. And I like that she separated them from her... Uh, original line with the lids and put them in the bag here to make a little separate. Um, I didn't, I wanted to order one of all of the uh, OG blends, but I only picked one. And this is the one I went with, warm and cozy, warm and cozy. Uh, this is Tonka bean, jasmine, patchouli, vanilla, blended with comfort, bath and body works. So as I said before, comfort, I believe is just vanilla and patchouli. So... This is, this is a sophisticated, sensual, classic blend. Oh man, this makes you want to, if you've had Tiffany's fuzzy socks or her, um, not mom life, it's, it's one of her wrap you up in a blanket blends. I'm thinking the one that's coming to mind is, um, uh, fuzzy socks. This is cashmere. This is coziness. This is relaxation. This is definitely a bedroom blend. This is comforting. Comforting. So that is my Teddy Bees haul. I have big decisions to make. Um, one, if I'm going to buy more, which there's a couple of these I think I'm going to snag, but what those ones are, I'm not sure yet. I've just got to make some big decisions. And plus, once she posts her list or whenever I see her list, um, I've got to make a decision on that of the ones that she's added, um, you know, just for the RTS.
So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. It's an hour and a half long, um, but this was a pretty big order for me at least. And I always like to share a little bit about me uh, with you guys during my Teddy Bees videos. So hope everyone has a beautiful week ahead. Um, um, stay cool, I should say. And um, happy end of school and summer's almost here, guys. So um, like I said, uh, if you're in doubt, get a souffle. We'll just leave it at that. So I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you soon.